Please click on closed captioning at the bottom of your screen, then click on show subtitles. Welcome to our celebration. Today, we take the time to focus on 100 years of vocational rehabilitation services as we celebrate our past and empower the future. During today's Zoom webinar, we will highlight the incredible services offered by our VR program with a focus on rehabilitation technology, business relations, and student programs. I love a quote from entrepreneur Scott Belsky. It's not about ideas. It's about making ideas happen. Over the past year, many states have been reeling from COVID, which affected their agency service provisions. And yet, our leadership at DBVI made certain we were able to make ideas happen. I would like to turn the presentation over to Dr. Rick Mitchell, our Deputy Commissioner for Services, who leads our VR program. Thank you, Tish, for that introduction. And please allow me to take just a moment to welcome each of you here today as we continue our celebration at DBVI of our 100th year anniversary. And today we want to share with you our vocational rehabilitation program. This particular program is very near to my heart for several reasons. One, as a 15-year-old teenager who had just recently lost his vision, I became familiar with DBVI and vocational rehabilitation. And it's through the vocational rehab program that I obtained the necessary skills of blindness. I was able to have work experiences and financial assistance as I attended college as well as graduate school. After finishing my master's degree in counseling, I applied for a vocational rehabilitation counselor position in our Roanoke office and I was fortunate enough to begin my career at DBVI as a VR counselor and I served in that capacity for 10 years. And now for the last 26 years, I've been an administrator both at a regional level and a state level of our vocational rehabilitation program. And it is through the last 45 years of experience that I've been able to see true independence gained by literally now thousands of individuals and it's through the vocational rehabilitation program and one of the greatest things that the VR program does is assist individuals to go to work and it's truly when somebody goes to work that they find true independence because they begin to receive a paycheck and it's through those paychecks that people obtain true independence and as I think about VR, I am pleased to look to the future to what it holds. Yes, we can celebrate our past because we've had many opportunities, but as we look to the future, we also know that our program is growing and developing and we're creating new opportunities that will lead individuals to find employment and they'll be able to find independence and these individuals that I'm speaking of are those that are blind or vision impaired or deaf blind. They will find the independence that they're seeking through our vocational rehabilitation program. And so to discuss further about VR, I'm gonna turn it over to our director of vocational rehabilitation, Pam Cato. Pam? Thank you for that wonderful introduction, Dr. Mitchell. It is an honor and a privilege to be here today wishing a 100th anniversary to the Virginia Department for the Blind and Vision Impaired. As the Director of Vocational Rehabilitation and Workforce Services, I also want to welcome you to the celebration as we take a look at services DBVI provides to assist individuals who are blind, vision impaired, and deaf blind achieve their employment goals. First, let's take a brief look at how the VR program came to be. The public rehabilitation program in America can trace its roots back to World War I. During that war, 
Modern medicine allowed more injured soldiers to survive and come home with significant disabilities than ever before. The Soldiers Rehabilitation Act of 1918 introduced a new concept in disability support, not just money to live on, but training for the injured veterans as preparation for new jobs matching their new abilities. This idea was popular with the American people and matched programs in several states for training injured workers. In 1920, Congress expanded the veterans program to include anyone with a physical disability, not just veterans. This was the beginning of the public vocational rehabilitation program. The Virginia Department for the Blind and Vision Impaired was established in 1922 by act of the legislature. It was then the Commission for the Blind. Similar federally funded vocational rehabilitation programs are available in every state, providing resources and tools to help those with disabilities work competitively in the community. The VR program we know today is regulated under the Rehabilitation Act of 1973 as amended by the Workforce Innovation and Opportunity Act, known as WIOA. WIOA is designed to help job seekers access employment, education, training, and support services. DBVI's mission is to provide services and resources which empower individuals who are blind, vision impaired, or deafblind to achieve their desired levels of employment, education, and personal independence. As you can imagine, there has been great evolution regarding the vocational opportunities available to blind Virginians over the last 100 years. Advances in communication, technology, and accessibility have opened up options previously unavailable. Today, we are going to take a look at the changes in rehabilitation technology, how our vocational rehabilitation program works collaboratively with the business community and services that are designed for adults as well as students and youth. Vocational rehabilitation counselors are the foundation of our program and provide numerous services, including guidance and counseling, career exploration, job development, education and training that lead to degrees and industry recognized credentials, technology training, interviewing skills, the list could go on. DBVI Vocational Rehabilitation Counselor's commitment and creativity know no bounds. I am honored to work with this amazing team of professionals. As we look at 100 years of innovation, nothing is more startling than the advancement and changes in technology that have allowed our individuals to pursue the job of their dreams. Any one of you remember party lines? Rotary phones. How about CD-ROMs or other pieces of technology that were cutting edge at the time but are now ancient? Let's take a look at how assistive technology has changed over the years since it first appeared at DBVI. Dr. Peggy Fields, our Program Director for Rehabilitation Technology, will share those highlights with you. Take it away, Peggy. Hello, I'm Peggy Fields, Program Director for DBVI Rehab Tech Services. There is a saying, the only time you should ever look back is to see how far you've come. Those words identify strongly with rehab technology services and our history within the agency. Today, technology is all around us. New and exciting innovations are appearing for individuals with vision impairments to help them manage the information in our world today. But it wasn't always like this. We had to start somewhere. And we did back in 1986. It started with an Apple IIe computer, then the IBMs and other computers showed up, and finally laptops and tablets appeared. Now we have smartphones, software that reads text, software that allows us to operate our computers by voice, GPS systems that tell what is around us, real technology, and many other innovations. The Rehab Technology Services Department has shared all we have learned with individuals who are blind or vision impaired, helping them to move ahead with their lives in education, work, and independence. 
Let's take a look back in time now at how rehab technology started and where it has led us today. The DBVI Rehab Tech Department began in the late 80s. Before then, technology consisted of typewriters and braille writers. But once we started down the computer path, there was no stopping us. Typewriters gave way to computers and other technology soon appeared. We were off and running. A prerequisite to learning computers was to have good keyboarding skills. Today, that is not as much of an issue because of voice recognition. But in the early computer days at DBVI, having good keyboard skills was the rule. Once a person graduated from keyboarding class, they entered the world of computer technology. Now they really knew what they were typing because the miracle of text-to-speech software had happened. Little did we realize then just how much of the world had been opened. Word got out. We had computers that talked. The demand for computer instruction exploded. Now there was no longer only one-on-one -on -one instruction, but classrooms were full of students. The technology era was fully underway. The technology went beyond computers themselves. Devices such as closed circuit TVs, now known as video magnifiers, helped individuals see the printed word. We didn't just focus on technology for vision impairment, other needs were addressed, such as if an individual needed assistance in keyboard input. As is shown in this picture, special keyboards were utilized. Braille technology also began to grow. Devices such as this early model Braille and Speak became available for those who use Braille as their primary means of reading. Now Braille displays are wireless and in some cases rival the features of a laptop. Soon, the technology demand grew outside the walls of VRCB. We took the classes on the road. We loaded a truck full of computers and other technology, headed for the University of Virginia and Virginia Tech, and took on a class of nearly 20 students for a week. Then the technology demand for accommodations came from work sites across the Commonwealth. Rehab Tech took the calls and the result was more blind and vision impaired individuals were employed. In these pictures, you can see two individuals using assistive technology at their places of employment in the mid 90s. The rehab tech department saw dedicated and skilled specialists take on the assistive technology challenges through the years. From the original rehab tech team of Dan Onsbach, Peggy Fields and Keith Holtzbach, the department has had seven other individuals serve as rehab engineers, each adding their own distinct expertise to the department. We have taken the tools of our trade and used them to help individuals succeed at school, work, and home. Video magnifiers, screen readers, screen magnifiers, text readers, and braille note takers have made a difference in the lives of many vision impaired and blind individuals. Today, many accessibility features are built right into the Windows operating system. The Rehab Tech main lab in the headquarters building houses an array of assistive technology available for people to view and try. As we look back at the early days of keyboarding to today, where barriers to accessibility are gradually coming down, we can truly say, look how far we've come, but it doesn't stop there. We need to say, look how far we still can go. Hi, I'm Sean Corcoran, and I am a Rehabilitation Technology Specialist with the Department for the Blind here at our headquarters. Well, there have been a lot of changes in technology since I started working with employers in 2005. And one big change has been in the software the employers use. Most companies used to use their own custom programs and databases, and it was difficult for our screen reading software to be able to interact with that and present the information. So now companies have moved to using web-based software. Whatever the programs are, they're running in a web browser and HTML, which our screen reading and screen magnifying software can interact with very easily. And there's a lot less uh, work that goes into making the job accessible. And there's been, of course, improvements in the uh, technology itself. Um, the software, the hardware is getting much faster and much better at its job. And um, even the devices themselves now are, have their own accessibility features built in. So when someone goes to a new work site, they can hand them a 
a laptop, a tablet, a cell phone, and all they have to do is turn on the accessibility features that are already built in, and they are good to go. And we don't have to do add a lot to it. But the biggest thing that I've seen outside of technology that's helpful is the attitude of the employers. Um, their companies are now realizing the value in hiring people with disabilities. And therefore, they are much more cooperative with us in setting up the accommodations for folks. And that has opened up a lot more employment opportunities. Hi, this is Matt Ader, Vice President of Vespero. I want to give a shout out to... DBVI for their 100th anniversary. I want to thank you for all the great support you gave me and training to get me to where I am in my career today. Congrats. My name is Norton Richmond. I'm a rehabilitation teacher with the Department of Blind and Vision Impaired for the last 50 years. I'd like to say that I'm very proud of my coworkers and I for supporting people who want employment through our VR program. Congratulations to VR for their wonderful work, and congratulations for the 100th year of our agency. Happy 100th anniversary, DBVI. I'm Paige Berry, a former deafblind specialist, and I'm so honored to have been a part of this legacy. Hello, I'm Dr. Joe Ashley, recently retired from the Department for Aging and Rehabilitative Services. And I want to add my congratulations to the Department for the Blind and Visually Impaired on their 100th year anniversary celebration. As an assistant commissioner at DARS, I had the opportunity to work closely with my colleagues at DBVI. And I want to congratulate them on their professionalism and commitment to mission. We all work together to create opportunities for individuals with disabilities, including those who are blind and visually impaired, to live, work, and thrive in their communities. Again, congratulations on 100 years of service. Thank you. I'm Carol Coger, former assistant director at the Virginia Rehabilitation Center for the Blind. Happy 100th anniversary, DBVI. As a 42 year veteran, I am proud to have been a part of the great work done for the blind citizens of Virginia. Keep doing what you're doing so well. My name is Dennis Garza. I'm former director of the Virginia Rehabilitation Center for the Blind and Vision Impaired. I want to wish uh, DBVI a happy 100th anniversary and keep up the good work. Next up is our Director of Business and Corporate Initiatives, Cindy Roberts, to share some of the innovative practices that her team has put into place that have resulted in outstanding outcomes not only for our individuals, but also for the companies that hire them. My name is Cindy Roberts and I'm the Director of Business and Corporate Initiatives. It is a pleasure to speak with you about the Business Relations Unit. The agency has always had a true commitment to our individuals and in not only helping with the job, but rather a meaningful life-changing career. In the spirit of the Workforce Innovation and Opportunities Act, in 2015, a newly formed business unit was put into place, having a statewide impact on not only our career seekers, but the businesses and organizations we serve at the local, state, federal, and national level. Greetings, DBVI team. This is Kathy West Evans with CSAVR, the Council of State Administrators of Vocational Rehabilitation. I'm sending you a video message today to say congratulations on 100 years of great work and to many more. I really appreciate the work that you've done, your leadership and your support of our work with business at the national level through the national employment team. Not only getting great candidates, in the pipeline for our business customers, but also the focus on supporting both the individual and the business to be successful. And that includes retention, stepping up and being a great source on the technical side when we need support to keep people working. Thank you for that. And congratulations again on 100 years. I really enjoy working with you and I appreciate your leadership and support at the state, national and local level. Thank you. Congratulations, DBVI, on your 100th anniversary. 
Thank you so much for your partnership with the Federal Aviation Administration. We wish you all the best and much success in the years to come. Congratulations, happy anniversary. Hi, I'm Bob Lancaster, Chair of Virginia Ability. On behalf of Virginia Ability, I'd like to wish DBVI a very happy 100th anniversary. Congratulations, and thank you for your partnership. Because we pride ourselves at moving at the speed of business, in 2016, with the support of our agency leadership, we put into place a robust paid work-based learning program, which allows our college students and adult career seekers the ability to intern in a position within their chosen field while building a resume, perfecting their work skills, and importantly, gaining confidence. This program also filled a need for our business and state agency partners. As a result, many of our individuals moved into direct employment at the site or were catapulted into a career opportunity as a result of a successful internship and a letter of recommendation. The business unit maintains successful working relationships with a diverse group of business and corporate employers. We are continuing to help business build their workforce with a pipeline of professional and talented individuals. The team regularly conducts disability awareness training and has also answered the call in helping business diversify their workforce while helping federal contractors meet their utilization goals in hiring individuals and veterans. Hi, I'm Cindra Yancey and I lead the talent outreach efforts for the Virginia Department of Transportation. Congratulations on celebrating 100 years of service. VDOT has had the privilege of partnering with you for four of those years, and we look forward to many more. Hi, I'm Chris Martin, Director of Workforce Development here at SOAR 365, and we want to wish DBBI a happy 100th anniversary. We are pleased to have one of DBBI's college interns working with us this summer. Happy anniversary, and here's to the next 100 years. Hi, I'm Craig Nickel from Tidewaters. Department of Environmental Quality. I'm Karen Brown. And I'm Debbie Arnold. And we're all here to say that we really appreciate all the efforts for DBVI, everything you've helped us do to help us increase our diversity, our equity, inclusion, and to have an amazing staff partnership with Karen and Holly so that we can see compassion and enthusiasm in the workplace every day. So we would like to wish DBVI Happy anniversary! I would now like to introduce you to the DBVI Business Relations Team, which serves the entire Commonwealth. Karen Kahn, based in Richmond, and Diane McBride, based in Northern Virginia. With innovative and fast thinking, this team of subject matter experts moved quickly to not delay services with the onset of COVID-19 in early 2020. In record time, DBVI Career Connections was launched. This virtual platform brought together business, corporate, federal, and state agency partners face-to-face -face with our career seekers. They were able to learn about the organization, available positions, and the hiring process. We also hosted private career fairs. This event takes place monthly and has been proven to be a best practice. We recently rolled out Steer Your Career, a series of six fast-paced workshops surrounding career readiness that run consecutively. The end goal being employment or work-based learning. This new program has far superseded our expectations as many of our career seekers are entering employment before the series ends. They are putting into place the skills they have gained in interviewing and knowing themselves as a career seeker to become successfully and gainfully employed. Good morning, DBI family. My name is Stacy Butler and I'm with CBS Health. Congratulations on your 100 year anniversary and wishing you many, many more. And thank you for the relationship you have built with CVS over the years, and we're continuing to grow. Thank you very much. Enjoy. Hi, I am Vicki Crawford with the U.S. Citizenship and Immigration Services. I would like to congratulate DBVI on its 100-year celebration. Thank you for serving the community.
you are making a major impact. This is Travis Rolfs from the Opus Network here to wish DBVI a happy 100th birthday. I can truly say we wouldn't be where we are today without DBVI. So here's to our continued partnership and the next 100 years of service to the vision impaired community. As DBVI looks to empower our future, we focus on the next generation, our students, and the future looks bright. DBVI is offering innovative and transformational programs for our students to give them tools to succeed. We would like for you to hear from two students who took advantage of life-changing opportunities. If someone asked you, ideally, what should someone who is blind, deafblind, or vision impaired be able to do independently, what would you say? Perhaps ride the bus and, or metro to and from school or work? Maybe buy a bag of groceries for their family? Or even cross a busy road? That's what I would have said five or six years ago. But then I met DBVI's Robotics Academy where I saw kids who were blind, deafblind, and vision impaired all assemble and program tiny microbots. These kids also managed to do rock climbing, play sports. They traded in their inhibitions and self-doubt for self-confidence and laughter. That's where I found the answer. These kids can do anything they want to do. DBVI's programs give kids the self-confidence and the ability to dream big. And they give the technology, the tools, and the training to help sustain those dreams. They also help with the kids' families and Virginia's employers to help realize and tap the tremendous potential of these kids. With the self-confidence that DBVI gave me, well, it set me on the track for a double major at VCU for a cinema and a business degree, along with an undergraduate venture creation program certificate. One day, I hope to open up my own film company. DBVI also allowed me to pay it forward by being an assistant teacher at their robotics academy, as well as their ACE Academy program. I am privileged to advocate for this community as a member of the State Rehabilitation Council. And someday, I hope that you too find a way that DBVI can help you. My name is Jaquan Evans. I guess I'll start off by saying a little bit about myself. I'm 22 years old. Right now I'm working on my computer science degree at Blue Ridge Community College. I graduated from Forest Park High School. While I was in high school, I really never really thought about IT careers or even messing with computers and things like that. I was more of a wrestler or a football player. I ran track a little bit. Once I graduated, met Tish Harris. She told me about the Robotics and Cyber Academy, which once I went there, I was able to come back and mentor a year after that, and then the year after that, I was able to come back as a paid teacher's assistant, being able to help other people tap into their talents as well, making sure everyone's getting involved and enjoying themselves. After that, I was able to come back as well another year and do Leap into Linux, which was a great success, even with the COVID thing happening, and we were still able to have a good amount of students come and enjoy ourselves and still learn to the best of our ability, which was great. Uh, I also want to say thank you to DBVI for having me and all the opportunities that they have given me. I also want to say happy 100th year to DBVI. Thank you so much. Hi, I am Megan Hall. You heard about robotics and how impactful it was. Let's hear next from Dr. Chuck Gardner of Cyber.org how developing accessible curriculum has made an impact on him and how the work he is doing is moving IT forward for all blind and low vision students. Hello, DBVI. My name is Dr. Chuck Gardner and I'm the director of curriculum here at Cyber.org. And today I'm joined by my fellow bespectacled furry friends. Um, calling from uh, northern Louisiana in Bossier City. And I just wanted to reach out and, and give a shout out for the 100th birthday celebration that um, we're all taking part in this year. Uh, and just to give a, a word of thanks um, for all the great opportunities that have been afforded as a result of the partnership between Cyber.org uh, and Virginia's DBVI. 
uh, you know, when we started working uh, with the organization back in 2015 uh, to bring uh, accessible curriculum opportunities to the students uh, from around the state, you know, no one had any idea um, what what laid ahead for uh, for us, uh, for the organization, and for the students. Uh, when we started with the robotics camp um, that first summer in, in 2016, and we brought those robots down to Richmond and, and we presented the, I think it was 24 students that year, with a box full of parts. And we had, you know, this um, agenda that was planned out for the whole week. I was going to start with building bots for the first day, and then we're going to move on to these sensors and, and all these different things we could do with the robots and, and with code. Um, and, you know, the, the, the agenda was tossed on its head uh, when these, these kids in the first three hours had their bots built. Um, I walked over to, to Tish Harris, my good friend, and I said, Tish, we have a problem, but it's a good one. Uh, we've got, you know, to shuffle up the agenda a little bit because they built these bots way quicker than we um, ever anticipated they would. Uh, so we talk about vocational rehabilitation for high school students, uh, giving them the opportunities to, to program, to build circuits, uh, to engage in robotics and sensors. Um, and it's not that easy, right? We, we, we build the circuits, we, we work with real electricity, but we're also talking about the physics behind these circuits. How does the sound sensor, the ultrasonic distance sensor, how does the accelerometer, all of these things, we want to make sure they understand how these things work. Um, so we do the physics and we do the science and we do the math um, and it's such a great opportunity, such a great opportunity. Um, we hosted that camp for three years in a row. Uh, almost 60 students um, uh, participated in that opportunity. Some of them came back and provided mentorship uh, to returning students. Um, and then Tish and I got together, um, Dr. Mitchell, um, the commissioner, and said, you know, what's next? Where do we go from here? And um, basic programming is good, robotics is good, STEM and cyber engineering is good, um, but we want to get these kids ready for the jobs that are coming up now in the areas of cyber and cybersecurity. So we did Linux. We programmed in Linux this summer. Uh, we had 14, uh, 14 kids came together in Richmond this summer. We did Linux programming. We did HTML. We talked about accessible websites. They built accessible websites all in a four and a half day uh, camp environment in Richmond, and it was fabulous. Cyber.org, um, with our, our grant partners at CISA, have the opportunity now to take this model and deliver it to students across the country. We're working with Nebraska and Michigan and Massachusetts and Vermont and uh, Colorado and Arkansas uh, to bring these programs that have evolved out of the Richmond office um, to students deserving, right? Um, awesome, engaging students from across the country. And we could be more thrilled about it. We love you guys at DBVI. Thanks for all the great opportunities. Uh, and we're looking forward to many, many more. Have a good day. Hey, John, and I have been in the DBVI family for six years. And wanted to give a shout out to Miss Harris. She has always encouraged me to do my best and provided me with fantastic program that gave me the valuable skill to help me navigate the challenges of life. Hello, my name is Caleb Calhoun, and I have really appreciated the coding camps that I have experienced from DVBI. Hi, my name is Abhishek. I participated in the robotics camp uh, as a student and later became a teaching assistant. Uh, I also loved the leap into Linux because it built my technical skills and it made me more aware about technology. Uh, I also participated in the ACE Academy, which taught me soft, soft skills and helped me build a resume and interview uh, etiquette because they've allowed me to realize my vision doesn't define me and they've allowed me to further grow and further succeed uh, throughout my life. Hello, my name is Kenny Calhoun. I have attended several of DBVI's tech-based camps like robotics, web design, and web development. I have learned a lot from them and I was very happy to have the opportunity to partake in them. Thank you, DBVI, and happy 100th anniversary. Hi, my name is Alexis Williamson. My favorite two programs from DBVI are the, are the Leap into Linux program where you learn how to code and create your own website. And the other program is Leap. Thank you, DBVI, for for the opportunity to to be a part of these 
to be a part of these two programs, they have taught me taught me quite a bit. Um, uh, happy 100th uh, DBVI. Thank you. Hi, um, my name is Happy, and um, I just want to say Happy 100th. Hi, my name is Chris Pudimsi, and one of my favorite programs at DBVI has been the Cyber Warriors program, as it was able to help me express my enthusiasm for technology and to be able to show that my, because of my disability, I should not be able to do other things that other people could be able to do. Hey, I'm Nevada. And I'm Utah. Thank you DBVI for all your help and support and helping us to succeed here at Virginia Tech over the last couple of years. Happy 100 years. As you can see, our next 100 years is in good hands. We have taken you on a journey today, and we want you to hear from one more person before I return with updates on our next event. Hello everyone, my name is Dr. Diane Carson, and I am happy to speak on what DBVI has meant to me. Uh, I first became acquainted with the organization after I had been out of work for over two years. Um, after coming affiliated with the department, I was directed to the job club. And in that experience, once a week, I was able to learn skills like resume writing, uh, interviewing techniques, uh, presenting myself positively on Zoom, and even doing two to, to three minute excerpts, my elevator speech and how I could be counted worthy. Uh, as a result of that experience, over several months, um, I gained a uh, non-paid work experience where I met a number of people and even uh, was offered a job in that. However, I am so happy to report that uh, I accepted a position uh, with the federal government. I am now working in my field as a program analyst uh, with an educated focus, received my first paycheck. <laughs> and I owe all of this, I owe to um, DBVI. And uh, with the accommodations that they gave me, with the skills that they built, with the confidence uh, and the encouragement and the support that I received from uh, each of the counselors and I am so thankful and grateful for that opportunity. So I say again, congratulations. I celebrate and commemorate um, the DBVI 100th anniversary and may you continue to inform people that disability does not mean dysfunction and uh, that we too deserve an even field so that we can be productive citizens in this great society in which we live. Thank you so much. Thanks everyone for joining us for this special occasion. Turning 100 is a proud milestone for us in VR as we celebrate our past and we work to empower the individuals we serve to create great futures. Please know the party does not end here. We hope you will join us for future celebrations as we highlight DBVI throughout the year. Please visit our DBVI Centennial website where you will find all of the videos in their entirety. Our next event will take place virtually on November 17th as we hear exciting news from Educational Services and the Library and Resource Center. Please be sure to join us. Before we leave you, happy 100th anniversary, DBVI. Our website is www.vdbvi.org forward slash centennial dot htm